Broadway's My Beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. When it's December and the winter has caught hold, Broadway comes up with a miracle. Silver trees grow out of the sidewalks. Men with beards and red velvet suits suddenly appear from out of the Bowery and dedicate themselves to being jolly. And reindeer roam the tundra of the spectaculars. It's a time of Crosby records, noses against department store windows, and wishing you'd kept up the Christmas club payments. Everybody's happy. Even the finance company sends you season's greetings. The atmosphere hadn't touched the alley, littered and dark, except for a stark cone from a flashlight held by a policeman. Up here, Danny. Shot twice in the back. Still breathing. Come on. Come on, Doc. Take a look, Doc. Let's put him on the stretcher. I don't think this one's got much time. Give me a hand here. Easy. Easy. We have him in the hospital in five minutes. Know who he is, Mugman? Yeah, his wallet says Ben Justin. Yeah, here it is. The ideas and what happened? I think he knows who shot him, Danny. He was saying he'll get even. Any names? Uh-uh, no. Easy with him now. Just slide the stretcher in here. We'll ride with him. Let's go, Mugman. Yeah. Okay, Joe, let's get this ambulance on the road. Who are you going to kill, Ben? Watch it, Danny. Flat him out. Now, here, hold the bottle up like this. Yeah. Sorry to talk to him. You better hurry. Who shot you, Ben? Can you hear me, Ben? Ben. Wait a second. Hey, Joe. You can take it easy. Take your time. He's dead, Danny. Then the slow ride through swarming avenues, the slow tolling of the ambulance bell, because the rhythm of death is slow. And through the windows of the moving car, the procession of fleeting faces, of melting forms scurrying from the bitter touch of an unknown wind. Then suddenly, at a stop, because death in the city must wait its turn, the face peering in, avid for a furtive glimpse at pain, seeing only the shroud-covered man, turning away in regret. The ambulance moves again, and within it, silence because there are no more questions that can be asked of the dead. At headquarters, the setting up of a file on Ben Justin. The word, murdered, neatly typed in triplicate. Then the fragments of his life drifting in to be pieced together, to be entered under the correct heading, on the correct line. Ben Justin lived in an apartment on West 86th. He was married to a woman named Evelyn. Go there, ask her the question the dying man wouldn't answer. Ben didn't tell you? He was bleeding to death and he wouldn't tell you who killed him? No, Mrs. Justin. I like him for that. For a lot of other reasons, but this one's the best. Then you will want to help us find his murderer. No, uh uh-uh. That's your job. That's what you get paid for. They shot him down in an alley. Sorry, but that's how I feel about things. You get what you work for in this world. No one can do it for you. You want Ben's killer? Find him. That way he'll belong to you, just you. If you know something, Mrs. Justin, we can hold you. Now, wherever did you get an idea like that? How would I know who killed Ben? It's his secret. He's taking it to his grave with him. Maybe I didn't tell you. Ben's last words were that he would kill him with his bare hands. Ben can't do that now, can he? But you can do something, Mrs. Justin. You can tell me about Ben. You can tell me who wanted him dead. Tell you about Ben? I could take my lifetime. But I'll brief it down for you. Ben did good by me. Dressed me in fancy clothes, showy. Showed me off to his friends. Didn't mind if one made a play for me. Grinned it off. Grinned about it when we got home. Cuffed me a little, and we go to sleep laughing. That's about Ben. Doesn't help as much. Then try this. Ben used to work for the Imperial Insurance Company, an investigator. Go ask them about Ben. 
I bet those insurance people knew more about him than even his wife knew. It's their business. Imperial insurance? On Lower Broadway. You can excuse yourself now, Mr. Clover. I want to go over my wardrobe, pick out a black dress for Ben's funeral. Silk. Yeah, Silk. He liked me in it. Uh, Yeah, it's very intriguing what you tell me, Mr. Clover. Look, why don't we go downstairs and chat about it over a cup of coffee? hmm? Now, Mr. Cogan. Oh. You don't understand, kid. I haven't had my breakfast. How can I do my best for Imperial Insurance without something hot in my stomach? We're trying to find out who killed the man. For this, I have to miss my breakfast? I tell you, you don't understand. My wife sleeps in the morning. She doesn't ben make Justin me Ben a... Justin used to work for you. I want you to give me what you know about him. Now. Because it won't wait. Oh. On an empty stomach? All right. All right. Yeah, he worked for us. One of our hottest cases... You're a goalie, kissed us goodbye. You don't know anything about him after that. You're just... Uh... Look, kid, did I say that? I know a lot about Ben. Let me open my mouth a little, huh? It's open. A year ago, we put Ben on the Colton murder case. Remember it? Who doesn't? Mrs. Colton found murdered, shot to death in her house on Long Island. That one cost us, a uh, company, a hundred grand. The police were handling it. Why did you put a private investigator on it? Oh, don't let it bother you. Justin flopped, too. He said he couldn't find a thing to prove that Mrs. Colton's nephew and his wife committed the mayhem. Remember Johnny and Dottie Reed? The lovable kids that all of us thought were the murderers. The state, us, till they were acquitted. No evidence, not even from our own boy, Ben. And after that, Ben quit. How did you know? Oh, I told you, yeah. He turned in a memo that we should pay the kids the hundred grand insurance the aunt left the boy. Shook hands all around, resigned. Then right away, we find out he was making merry with the Reed kids. All over town, in their home. How do you know that? It was a password in our office, how Ben and his wife were always in the company of the kids. Why? The kids were acquitted? They have the right to make their own friends? For a hundred grand, we keep trying. Do I get coffee now? Yeah. Yeah, Here's a dime. Let it be on me. Hello. What can I do for you? My name's Danny Clover from the police. Yeah. Is your name Reed? Yeah, that's right. I wanted... You've uh... got to look in your eyes. You want to talk to me, don't you? Come on in. And here. I know that look, Mr. Clover. The police and I have been chummy before. Is your wife here? Vacuuming the rugs in the dining room. Daddy! Hey, Daddy! Yeah, what do you want, Johnny? Turn off the load and come in here. We've got a caller. I hope you don't mind the way Dottie looks. <laughs> Holiday cleaning. What'd you say? Oh. Uh, this is Danny Clover, Dottie. He's from the police. I'll be honest with you, Mr. Clover. I'm busy. Well, just a few questions about Ben Justin. <laughs> Guess I'm right, Dottie, huh? Soon as I saw this morning's paper, I told you a policeman would be twirling his hat at the door. Then you talk to him, Johnny. I've got to get my work done. I'm afraid you'll have to hold it off for about five minutes, Miss Reed. Do you have a warrant? I don't need one. All I want... Uh, Dottie gets all mixed up. Ever since the cops scared her to death last year, well, she just could be lost, and the only person around, a cop, and she wouldn't ask him which way was home. Johnny isn't kidding. Cops. How well did you two know Ben Justin? We're not going to his funeral. Not even flowers, Mr. Clover. Funny. I heard you were pretty good friends. Two weeks ago, Johnny and I took turns yawning in his face. He still wouldn't go home. Then he used to drop in here often. Uh, Maybe a couple times a month. (laughs) When I shook his hand after we were acquitted, he took that to mean buddy. He couldn't get through his head out of shaking anybody's hand. Ben Justin tried to send you to the chair. I don't understand. Neither did we. You inherited a lot of money when your aunt was killed, didn't you, Mr. Reed? You people can't leave us alone, can you? Hey, you shouldn't have asked that, Mr. Clover. Dottie's going to be upset all day. It's going to be like this for the rest of our lives. Dottie. No matter what we do, where we go, it's going to be the same way. Get him out of here, Johnny. Get him out of here. You heard him, Mr. Clover. You better get out. Dottie's busy. <laughs> Mr. 
Mind if I turn on the radiator, Danny? It's cold in here. Huh? How can you stand it? There. Danny, you've been over and over the transcript of a year-old trial maybe a hundred times. You want something juicy to read? Try this pulp. It's good, huh? Tells me the thrilling things detectives have happened to them. For two bits, it thrills even me. The things that go on. Mrs. Colton was killed with Johnny Reed's gun. Our ballistics man proved it. Brought it in evidence. Exhibit A. But no fingerprints. No fingerprints. And if you read the transcript another hundred times, there still won't be any. What are you trying to build, It Danny? bothers me. You mind, Muggervin? Danny, listen to me. The kid had a right to the gun. Messenger boy for a brokerage house. Briefcase is full of stocks and bonds. Sometimes even money. A boy needs a gun in a career like that. They present him with it, courtesy of the house. And it killed his aunt. Endowed two kids with $100,000. The gun could have been stolen from him, just like he said. His wife put her arms around him. He felt different somehow to her without the gun. That was the first they knew it was missing, just like they said in court. Yeah. I don't understand what you're after, Danny. The kids were acquitted. I know. They said they spent the day picnicking on the Jersey Palisades. Nobody could prove different. Nobody could prove they were at the murder house that day. They were acquitted. I told you I know, Muggerman. Then what's with you? You think you found a free and easy way to solve Ben Justin's murder? I take it back, Danny. I, I, I didn't mean to say that. Why so chummy with the Reed kids? You mean Justin and his wife? You care about anyone else? Justin was a top insurance investigator. He couldn't find a thing to prove that the kids were anywhere else but eating ham and cheese sandwiches on the Palisades. That cinched it. When an insurance company... Danny, you gotta go. You just gotta. Here, I brought your overcoat. I'll help you into it. It's not too much to tag me up. Where am I going? To the residence of one Mrs. Evelyn Justin. She just phoned in, Danny. She was crying, then screaming. In between said cries and screams was sandwiched that someone was trying to kill her. I made her go slow so I could take her down in shorthand. Here, Danny. Her very words. Yeah, get your coat, Muggerman. It's a cold ride. Down this hall, Muggerman. Come on. Right behind you. Wish I'd taken that call. Sounds real quiet in there. Locked, huh, Danny? Lean on the bell, Muggerman. Yeah. Danny! Danny, something happened. Take it in. <laughs> Mrs. Justin! Watch it, Danny. The place is a furnace. Mrs. Justin! Oh, Danny, you can't go in there. Don't be crazy. Yeah. I don't understand. What happened? We ring the bell, we blow the place up. You are listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. On the eve of the holiday, Broadway opens wide its loudspeakers, takes last year's tinsel off a back shelf, considers its tarnish, shrugs and hangs it in a doorway, in a shop window. Just above the summer resort sports shirt sprinkled with artificial snow and decked with dust-covered holly. It makes glints in the winter's sun, sways gently in the winter's wind, and it makes you all warm inside, doesn't it, kid? The warm-eyed women walking by, hugging the warm fur close to them. Makes you merry, and the music floating out of the metallic throats. Good, huh, kid? But turn it up. That way you won't hear the dissonance of death. That way it won't intrude that explosion uptown. Anyone killed? No one knows yet, but when they do, it'll be given to you. Hot off the presses, shining from the Translux, gift-wrapped with red ribbons. But before that happens, they've got to clear away the charred litter, hold the crowds back, assure the lady her kid wasn't in there. You don't know where he is. And then finally, a man comes up to you. It's all clear now, Danny. We can go in. Did they find anything? Uh-huh. They said in the kitchen. They said to watch ourselves. The walls are still smoldering. Okay, let's go, Muggerman. Yeah. He said in the kitchen. Uh huh. Watch it, Danny. The doorway don't look any. Come on. Not much left, is it, Danny? You were here before. Not much left, huh? Broken, up in smoke. Hey. Yeah. Mrs. Justin. Yep. Explosion must have done it, huh, Danny? The way she. 
the way. She was beaten up first. Slugged. See? Here. Mm. Here? Yeah. They made sure, huh, Danny? If we hadn't rung the doorbell, maybe they... Call it in, Muggerman. To homicide. I come bearing gifts from the boys in technical to you. You thank them for me, Gino. Goes without saying. Christmas is coming, Danny. Courtesy is the motto of the season. A fella has Goes to... Goes without saying. What have you got? Gift number one. You are confirmed in your deduction that Mrs. Justin was slugged, left unconscious to... To, uh... Well, you were there, Danny. I don't have to spell it out for you. No, Gino. For this pearl, my thanks. This, a poet once Start said... Tag, Leo. Yeah, Danny. Gift number two. The doorbell was rigged to a booby trap of a type commonly used in the last... Hmm, last. What am I saying? Ring the doorbell and boom, blast, poof. It was that professional. To the contrary, wise is Mr. Gordon from Technical. He says it was a clumsy imitation. Gordon didn't like it, huh? He sniffed his nose at it. However, in the matter of an inferno machine, what matters clumsy, huh, Danny? Anything else? Nothing else. Except an itching in my brain. Huh? Yeah. I am making out my Christmas list, and it itches me. Want to give Mike Shrek, the bald-headed miracle detector from Philadelphia for Christmas. Ah, the joy he has brought me. I should return it with a likewise. You... You got a suggestion, Danny? Now, only a question, Gino. How did you know it was Mrs. Justin you talked to on the phone? Well, she told me, Danny. Several times she told me. Well, what reason would I have to disbelieve what a lady tells me? You're trying to make out I'm a gulliver, Danny? You know... Pardon me, Gina. Likewise, I'm sure. When they tell you their name, see if you... Danny can... Clover speaking. Now, this is Swifty Crenshaw of the 34th Street Post Office, Mr. Clover. They referred me to you. Why? Oh, well, because I'm holding some undelivered mail for Mrs. Evelyn Justin. Bet you'd love to get your hands on it. Yeah, I would. Fine. Just ask for Swifty Crenshaw. Everybody knows me. Bye now. Hey, who was it, Danny? A Swifty Crenshaw from the post office. Swift... Crenshaw? See? See how you two can be a gulliver, Danny? You Mr. Crenshaw? Oh, you bet. My name's Clover. I spoke to you on the phone a little while ago. You bet. Just wait here. Hey. Here you are. The mail addressed to Mrs. Ben Justin. Uh-huh. Uh, there's not much there. Circulars, a few Christmas cards from people who heed our message to mail early. One there that's sealed and the center tried to mail a third class. Postage due on that one, but I guess we can forget it, huh? Uh, I can save you trouble turning over that postcard. It's for a free grease job with 15 gallons of gas. Uh, that other is for a book overdue at the library. You've been having yourself a time, haven't you, Mr. Crenshaw? Hey, you bet. What's in this envelope? How do I know? Hey, it's no use holding an envelope like that up to the light. It's Manila. It's postmarked yesterday. Addressed to Mrs. Ben Justin. P.O. Box 626, 34th Street Station, New York, New York. Return address. The same. She addressed it to herself? Uh, what's in it? You bet, Mr. Crenshaw. up the records now. Okay, okay. Tell him to hurry. Mr. Jasper will speak to you. Good. Mr. Jasper on the phone. What about it, Jasper? You say you have a carbon copy of a subscription form for today's Lady Magazine? Where did you get it? In an envelope. Come on, your girl said you were looking it up, Jasper. The form is used by your company. Signed with the initials D.F. Who is D.F.? Donald Fraser. He would have gotten 400 points if he'd handed the subscription in. Why didn't he? Where does Donald Fraser live? 19 West 16th. He's a pretty good... Yeah. Thanks. You better come along, Muggerman. Right. You ring the bell this time, Danny. No, I'll ring it. I read someplace if you crash in an airplane, the first thing to do is to go up in another one. 
Now nah, you ring the bell, Danny. Thanks. What do you want? You Donald Fraser? So, what do you want? We're from the police. <laughs> Didn't you hear, Donald? We're from the police. Let's go inside. <sighs> Sit down, Donald. You want a cigarette, Donald? I don't smoke. You drink? No, I can't stand the taste. He's got refined taste, Danny. You signed this magazine subscription form, didn't you? Or didn't you? I don't know. You know. You know, don't you? I signed it. All right. You took a magazine subscription on November 2nd, 1949. That's the date on this form. It's also the date Mrs. Colton was shot to death. So... What's that got to do with anything? It's got this to do with it. It's a magazine subscription for Mrs. Colton. You took the subscription. Who signed it? I'll tell you. You're not kidding. Let him alone, Michael. I, uh, I came by Mrs. Colton's that morning selling subscriptions. Mrs. Colton said to come back later. She wanted time to make up her mind. When you came back, Johnny Reed was there with his wife. I said leave him alone. Yeah, that's right. They were there that day. The girl yelled up to her aunt that I'd come back. Mrs. Colton said to take the subscription... The girl signed for her. That does it, Danny. Not quite. Donald, then uh, then Ben Justin got to you, didn't he? He was investigating the murder and tracked down a lead that a magazine salesman was on the Colton block that day. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, the very next day. Before I had a chance to turn in the form in to Mr. Jasper. I, I, I shouldn't have done it. I know I shouldn't have done it. For a thousand dollars, the trouble I'm in. I didn't mean to do anything. He talked me into it. No, it's you. What do you want? Let's go inside, Mrs. Reed. Remember how busy I was yesterday? I'm busier today. That's too bad. I want to talk to you, and I want to talk to your husband. All right, come in. I've got an idea Johnny's going to throw you right out, and I want to watch. Johnny! Johnny! Yeah? Look who's here, Johnny. Huh? Oh. Hi, Mr. Clover. Can I get you something? I just broke out a quart of beer. No, thanks. I want to talk to you alone. Ah, sure, sure. My pleasure. Uh, go make us some coffee, Daddy. I told him you were going to throw him out, Johnny. You're making a liar out of me. Just get the coffee, Daddy. Then you'll throw him out? If he annoys me. All right, Johnny. Now, what's a good word, Mr. Clover? What have you been doing with yourself lately, Johnny? Oh, this and that. I got enough money. I'm lucky with the horses. The money gets used up and replenished. I envy you. Yeah, got a system. That's fine. I'm glad to hear of it. Is this what you come all the way out here to talk to me about? You impressed me the last time I talked to you. <laughs> you kidding? No, I'm not. Say, uh, you think Dottie needs any help with the coffee? Yeah, probably. She's all thumbs. But she doesn't like you, Mr. Clover. Uh, maybe if I help her with the coffee. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you do that? Help her with the coffee. Uh, mine's with cream, Mr. Clover. Two sugars. What do you want? I just came in to tell you to get your hat and coat. That sounds familiar. That's right. You're under arrest. <laughs> hey, you're doing all right, Mr. Clover. You're under arrest for murder. Let me tell you why it sounds familiar, Mr. Clover. Because it's happened before. What happened before? A year ago, when Johnny and I were arrested for the murder of his aunt, the police separated Johnny and me. Then one cop came to me and said Johnny confessed. That way I was supposed to break down. They did the same thing to Johnny. <laughs> oh, as a policeman, you're a real nothing, Mr. Clover. A real nothing. <laughs> hey, let me laugh with you, huh? Oh, say, you remember what they tried on us before, Johnny, trying to make us confess? Well, your friend Clover just tried it again. <laughs> oh, Clover, Clover. All right, you had your fun. Don't you think you ought to go home now? I haven't had my coffee yet. Daddy makes such lousy coffee. It really isn't worth it. Oh, I don't understand you. Throw him out, Johnny. That's what I mean. I came here to give you something for Christmas. Maybe I'm a little early. Maybe I should come back. If you're giving, we're receiving. What do you got? This. The magazine subscription form that your wife signed last year in your aunt's house. Where'd you get it? From Mrs. Justin's post office box at 34th Street Station. You got it figured, huh, Mr. Clover? Sure. 
It's proof that the two of you were at Ms. Colton's the day she was murdered. The piece of evidence the DA didn't have at your trial. Johnny, they can't try us again, can they? You, uh, planning to reopen the trial with new evidence, Danny? It won't be necessary. Justin bought this subscription form from the salesman. He was blackmailing you with it. Then a little while ago, he got afraid of you two, passed it on to his wife. That's where she had it, huh? That's where she mailed it for safekeeping after you killed her husband. You thought you destroyed it when your wife called headquarters and had me set off that booby trap. And now you got it. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Danny. How much you want? How much were you paying Justin before you killed him? Don't bargain. How much? All of it. Everything you got. I want you to sign a confession, you and your wife. Let me sit down. Think about it. <laughs> Serve the coffee, Danny. Gonna stir it with that gun? No. I'm gonna kill you with the gun. You want one slug or two? Johnny! Hey! Hey! Ah! Go! Go! <laughs> This'll put you out of your misery, Johnny! You can have half of it, Mr. Clover. All of it. You can have anything you want. I've got what I want. Let's get your coat, Mrs. Reed. In the midnight cold, Broadway echoes with sounds you hear only in darkness. The fleeting whispers that speckle places where there's no sun. People pass and touch you. You look down, there are fingers of dust on your shoulder. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway, my beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia. The program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. Included in tonight's cast were Anthony Barrett, Sam Edwards, Virginia Gregg, Michael Ann Barrett, Sidney Miller, and Jack Crucian. Now, here's Larry Thor. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's program concludes the present series of Broadway's My Beat. We thank you for listening and hope to return to the air in the near future when Danny Clover will bring you more adventures along the Great White Way. Dan Coverly speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.